guys. Today I'm going to talk about why command and control is not best when we're talking about controlling emissions. And in doing so, I'm going to review the marginal abatement cost curve and marginal damage function curve for the graph, where you have both emissions and abatement on the x-axis. Those are two separate graphs. I'm going to go through each of them. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's start reviewing this graph. Okay, so on this graph, I've got two graphs. I've got one graph with emissions on the x-axis and another graph with abatement on the x-axis. And I know that emissions and abatement are related. And so let's start with emissions. I know I'm going to have an MAC curve and an MDF curve. So I know that one of those is going to be upward sloping. And I know that's going to happen for both curves. And I also know that I'm going to have a downward sloping curve in both graphs. And so the question is, which line is which? So remember, if we're talking about emissions, and I want to think about the marginal abatement cost for a firm. Well, marginal abatement cost, generally, we assume that it costs firms more to abate more. And remember with the relationship, as we go from left to right, if emissions is increasing, then as we go left to right, that must mean that abatement or the reducing of emissions is going down. And so if abatement is going down and we know that marginal abatement cost increases as abatement increases, then the marginal abatement cost curve must decrease as abatement decreases, which means that this blue line here is our marginal abatement cost curve. That also means by default, that this upward sloping curve is going to be our MDF. Another way to think about that is this is the marginal damage function. This is how much people are suffering from an extra unit of emissions. And so as we get more emissions, people suffer more. So with emissions on the x-axis, the MDF should be upward sloping. And so now let's talk about that same graph with abatement on the x-axis. So again, it's going to be sort of opposite in the sense that as we have abatement going up from left to right, that means that emissions are going down from left to right. That means that we have fewer and fewer emissions. So if we think about cost to the firms, as abatement is going up, if marginal abatement cost we say is increasing as you abate more, then here this upward sloping line has to be the marginal abatement cost curve. And again, if emissions are going down as we move left to right, if emissions are going down and we suffer more as emissions get higher, that means we suffer less, the marginal damages is lower as we have fewer emissions. And so this must be our marginal damage function. Okay, so that's how the two graphs are set up. So again, if you want to make it easier, maybe what I'll do is I'll change this red line to be blue. And so that the MDF and the MAC colors will match across the two graphs. But hopefully that just makes it a little easier to think about what's happening. Now let's think about what happens in the market and in the optimal setting. So for both of these, Remember that we're going to have a marginal private cost and a marginal private benefit. We have a marginal social cost and potentially a marginal social benefit. So let's start with the emissions graph. And to do that, what we're going to think about for the market is we need to think about a marginal private cost and a marginal private benefit. And that's going to be for the firms. So notice that for the firms, they're going to have a marginal private cost of emitting that's exactly equal to zero. And so it's going to be this axis right here. So that's going to be the marginal private cost of emitting for the firm. The marginal social cost for the firm, that's just going to be equal to the marginal damages function, which means that our marginal abatement cost is going to be the marginal private benefit of emitting. And so the marginal private benefit here is that they don't have to pay the marginal abatement cost. So it's sort of like a negative cost as a benefit, but that's fine. It's a negative slope line. We know that's supposed to be a benefit. And so just to say that again, the marginal abatement cost is the marginal private benefit for the firms because their marginal private benefit is they get to avoid paying the marginal abatement cost. So they're going to set for the firms where marginal private benefit equals marginal private cost. That's going to be right here. That's going to be EM. Notice we have zero abatement. We have full emissions. And so currently we are not reducing the amount of emissions in the market at all. Now, if I go to this other graph, we're going to see something very similar. So if I start with the marginal abatement cost, that's going to be the marginal private cost of abatement because that's the cost the firms are paying. The marginal damage function, that's going to be the marginal social benefit of abatement because we get to reduce the amount of damages that people experience. On the x-axis, this is going to be the marginal private benefit of abatement because firms don't gain any benefit just from abating. All it really does is increase their costs. So we're gonna say that there's no benefit to firms of abating. And so again, if we think about the market, we're gonna get where marginal private benefit equals marginal private cost, which is right here. That's gonna be AM. And again, remember if this is zero abatement, then the difference between full abatement and zero abatement must be emissions. So this distance right here between AM and this guy right here, this is full abatement. So I'm going to say AF for full abatement. 
This difference right here, this is the same as EM. I'm just going to reduce this line so you can read it better. This is EM. This is full emissions or zero abatement. And so even though we have two graphs with different things on the axes, we're getting the same answer. Now, if we're going to think about the optimal or the socially optimal level of abatement or emissions, that's going to be where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. And so if we go to the marginal abatement cost, which is also equal to the marginal social benefit, and so our optimal level of emissions are right here. So this point right here, this is going to be E star, and that's also going to reflect A star. If I want to know A star, what I can do, again, I'm just going to remove this line for a second just so we can read it a little better, and I'll pull this up. So the difference here between E star and EM, that distance right there, that is A star. And similarly, if we go over to our graph on the right, we're going to do the same thing where we're going to set marginal social cost equal to marginal social benefit, where this marginal private cost here is also equal to the marginal social cost. And so again, we're going to get where the two curves cross. That's going to be A star, which is again, the difference between full emissions and the emissions we land at. And again, if I draw this distance here between full abatement and A star, that's going to be E star, which is exactly the same as we got on the left hand graph. So again, I know these graphs can be kind of complicated. Feel free to watch this as much as you want in order to get that, but hopefully this is making this make a little more sense. So now with that in mind, I'm going to talk about why command and control is not the least costly way to control emissions. So to do that, we're going to use those graphs and I'm going to start with the graph with emissions on the X axis. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a marginal damage function for the world. I'm also going to start with a world marginal abatement cost. And so that's the two firms in this world. And so we know what needs to happen is we know we need to get to this point E star. That's going to be our target emissions, which means, of course, that the difference between full emissions or EM and E star, this is how much we want to abate. This is our A star. And so now we need to think about how this is going to work both optimally and with command and control, command and control being just you tell each firm how much to reduce their emissions. So if I go in here and I have maybe two different marginal abatement cost curves, maybe one looks like this and maybe one looks sort of like this, where you can see that firm A has a much higher marginal abatement cost than firm B. Well, if I'm going to do this optimally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, I'm going to figure out where the marginal abatement cost equals marginal damage function. And I'm basically going to equate that across these firms. And so we know for each of these firms, they want to emit right here. They want to emit right here because that's their full emission point. And so if I think about where the marginal abatement cost curves are equal, I've got this guy for firm A. So this is going to be E star A. And I know this guy right here, this is going to be E star B. And so what you can see is because B has a lower marginal abatement cost than firm A, of course it makes sense that then firm B is going to abate more. They're going to abate this distance here. This is their A star B versus firm A is only going to abate this level right here or A star A because they have a higher cost, a higher abatement cost. And so it doesn't make sense for them to abate as much. Now suppose that you said, okay, this is going to be my E star. This is going to be my target. And my command and control is that each firm, we're going to set that EA has to equal EB, which is going to be E star over two. So maybe E star over two for each firm. Maybe that's sort of right here for firm A and sort of maybe right about, you know, here somewhere. Maybe I'll do that in a different color. Maybe right about here for firm B. So you can see that firm A now, the cost of firm A, if they want to abate to there, they are going to be here. That's going to be their new marginal abatement cost. Firm B is going to be here. And so we can know that this is not the least costly way to do that because this triangle here for firm B is going to represent the extra cost. So this is the extra cost for firm A under this policy versus what they were doing before. And we can do this with abatement on the X axis instead. What's going to happen is you're going to have a marginal abatement cost curve that looks like this. So again, if firm A is more costly, maybe what they're going to have is their abatement cost curve is going to look something like this. Firm B is going to be a smaller marginal abatement cost curve. Maybe it looks something like this. So here are their MACs. Here are their MACs. Again, we've got a marginal damage function. Now it's going to be downward sloping. Maybe it looks something like this. 
So we know that we want this point right here. And we're going to take this point with a somewhat straight line and go all the way over. And again, we're going to see the same story where full emissions at the market is at zero. And now what we're going to have is we're going to have firm A go to here. So this level right here, this is going to be either A star or their abatement. And this level right here is going to be the A star for B. Again, we're seeing that B is abating more because their marginal abatement cost is lower. If we were to do something with a command and control, where maybe this is A star, and we want to say A star over 2, well then we're going to say that this point right here is probably something like A star over 2. Maybe this point right here, maybe this is A star over 2. And so again, we've got some extra cost for firm A. We've got some cost savings for firm B. But of course, the cost of firm A, the extra cost of firm A is going to outweigh the savings by firm B. So overall, we will have increased our costs. So again, if there's any questions, feel free to put a comment below. But hopefully this just gives you a little better idea of what's happening with these graphs. And again, if these videos are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.